Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, celebrating expression, fostering talent, and connecting the community to Columbus artists, performances, exhibitions, concerts, public art, and more at columbusmakesart.com. From these contributing sponsors and viewers like you, thank you. This time on Broad and High, we visit a unique museum learn about a local program that connects kids and music, and listen to the amazing musicians that are part of this program in the latest Broad and High Presents session. This and more right now on Broad and High. Welcome to Broaden High. I'm your host, Kate Quickle. In our first segment, we travel to Tampa, Florida, where we explore an exhibit that sparks questions about art's role in society. In Perfect Harmony, Man, Machine, and Music at the Tampa Bay Hotel is an exhibit at the Henry B. Plant Museum. Let's explore how progress shapes a community. The Plant Museum is this incredible space. We're housed in what was the Tampa Bay Hotel that operated from 1891 till 1932. Henry Plant built up this transportation empire that spanned the entire eastern seaboard. It was railroads and steamships and hotels. The building that we're in today, the Tampa Bay Hotel, was the crown jewel of his empire. All of the wealthy and famous people of the time period would have been coming here. So without Henry Plant, Tampa doesn't exist the way we think of it today. He very much saw that the hotel would serve the community. And so not only was there a hotel, but in the middle of the 1890s, he also established what he called a casino, which at the time was an entertainment venue, not a site for gambling. But it would have you know, live performances, concerts, things like that. And then there was an orchestra that performed daily, both in the hotel and around the community. If you think about it, music really was a communal activity because there wasn't much recorded music to listen to. So you were listening to people performing it live. So some of the well-known performers of the casino would have been people like John Philip Sousa, who brought his military band here. Booker T. Washington spoke here in 1912. Dame Nellie Melba, who was a world famous Australian opera singer. These are like the Beyonce's of the 1890s. We are so excited for our new exhibit. It's titled Imperfect Harmony, Man, Machine, and Music at the Tampa Bay Hotel. This exhibit really looks at the intersection of music, technology, and how that creates community, or in some cases disrupts community in Tampa. It's a really fascinating exhibit because at this time period, we have these mechanical instruments that were brand new, that would have been very much novelties to the people who were staying at the hotel and the people in Tampa. And it led to all of these sorts of questions, things like, do we still need musicians now that we have mechanical instruments that can take the place of them. The genesis of the exhibit was we had the opportunity to borrow an orchestrion, which is an elaborate self-playing musical instrument that replicates or was supposed to replicate an entire band or orchestra. Henry B. Plant purchased an orchestrion for his home at a cost of $5,000, which in today's dollars would be more than my home cost, right? So, um, so this was the kind of thing that was really reserved for industrial elites, royalty. Henry B. Plant decided to actually put an orchestrion in the hotel which meant that if you were a resident of Tampa, unlike 99.9% .9 of the population, you could actually see one in person. But I think one of the things that is also really so significant is to recognize its limitations. So if you were thinking about artificial intelligence now, you know, we all know those things that are tells that, oh, this photograph is fake because it's so hard to you know, replicate hands. An orchestrion couldn't play that long. 
So it would actually be, because it plays basically for the length of the role. So it's not as if it's suddenly going to be giving entire concerts. But I think when we look at all of the really significant ways that the Tampa Bay Hotel Orchestra served the community, which again required mobility, they would give concerts in Plant Park. A 2,000 pound machine is not going to do that. We have a variety of things that people can take a look at. And they really should, because it is almost impossible to see one of these instruments, much less the range that we have available. The mechanical violin, I believe it's called a violin virtuoso. It's just amazing that they've taken an instrument and built a machine around it to play the instrument. I would never think about that today. These instruments, although technologically fascinating, did nothing to really take away from the experience of live music because they did not sound like an orchestra. I love that we are able to tell the stories of individuals in this exhibit. My favorite is a man named Giovanni Tallarico. He was the orchestra leader at the Tampa Bay Hotel in 1909, and some of his family still lives in the area. But one of his grandchildren, you have probably heard of, a gentleman named Steven Tyler, the front man for Aerosmith. The music box was definitely something that was designed for the home, certainly the well-to-do home. And then eventually it was replaced by the phonograph. That was revolutionary in a very different way because by the time that you get to the 1920s, anybody can purchase a phonograph on credit. And so it really changes or kind of democratizes music in a way that hadn't occurred before. So when I think about this exhibit, my big takeaway is that a lot of the questions that we are wrestling with today are similar to things that our ancestors asked about. We're thinking about how does AI fit into music? Well, how did technology fit into music 130 years ago? That was a very common question, and it led to this cultural moment of really thinking about and examining what is the role of a musician, what is the role of art in our society, and we're still asking those questions today. Learn more at plantmuseum.com. The Kirk Horn Music Fund was created with a dream of connecting kids through the universal language of music. The reality reaches beyond learning to read music and playing chords, but is building confidence and collaborating to create harmony. The Broad and High team recently visited the Linden Community Center to see how instruments and songs are inspiring these young musicians. Whenever you're ready. The Kirkhorn Music Program has been in place since 2017 and it started because of a dream that Kirk had of providing music lessons to underprivileged kids. And uh, prior to his uh, death in July of 2016, uh, he and his wife and Jenny and I met with the Columbus Foundation and started a fund. And then uh, he passed away in July of 16 and so 2017 we were able to start this program. And uh, we have uh, music camp each summer and uh, lessons throughout the year. And we have uh, a couple dozen kids that are involved in music. One, two, ready, go. It's important to see things that Kirk pursued in his life, connecting people, love of music, and seeing that in the kids where they're connecting, they're making music, and the relationship building that's happening. That just is so gratifying to me, Kirk's mom, to see those kinds of qualities that he had, seeing that transferred and enjoyed through this music program. Excellent, cool, let's see what happens. Once a week we do small groups with um, a couple guitar players or maybe a bass player or two vocalists all getting together. 
in the same room and working on the same techniques and just ways to get better at music. For me, this program has been a learning experience, not just like in guitar, but also in life too, because it has helped me overall, like with my skills in guitar, but then also I've made friends, valuable friends too, and met people that I don't know if I would have met without this program. So I feel like it really did help me reach out to people. Not only that, but it helped me with my skills, social skills, being able to talk to people because I know sometimes I'm not the best at talking to people, but when it came to this program, it got me to be more outwards and I can talk to more people and overall just, you know, be able to interact with my surroundings. The Kirkwan Music Program means a lot to me. We kind of just have fun, talk about songs we like or new stuff we've seen or heard. So it's kind of like a wind down time. It's really fun and I can hang out in a safe space. It's just amazing how these youngsters can get in there and play this fabulous music pretty quickly and how the camaraderie that they have. I mean, they're rock stars together. Um, and that just, it's just so fun to be around them. And, and also to hear from the parents about changes uh, in their schools. You know, this confidence now that they have um, is carrying over in other areas where they may have struggled a bit. The program, for my oldest, I will start with her. She, um, a little shy um, around new people. For Savannah, um, she's built up her confidence a lot uh, being in this program. Again, she doesn't like you know, a lot of attention on her, but in this program, she's gained friends. Kaden is my social butterfly. She loves everything and everybody and wants, she would be in front of this camera right now if she could be. And um, she just happened to join because her sister was in it and she said, why not? But she is a music buff. For me, I think the biggest thing has been seeing them come out of their shells, as well as the exposure that they've had, uh, the enjoyment in them, seeing them play. And I've just been amazed from the beginning to see where she started to where she is now. Savannah, definitely, with um, her playing and Caden, stage fright. Seeing her overcome stage fright now, she will sing all day long, but when you put her in front of the mic, it takes a second, but then to see her light up when the crowd is enjoying them and then they just turn into different kids. Mr. Jesse was the first person that came to me and my brother about guitar even before we had came across London. So being with him all this year has means a lot and seeing how we progress and seeing kind of our environment change around but still seeing those same people is always nice. I don't necessarily know if it's easy or hard but I just really enjoy doing it and um, what keeps me coming back is knowing that you know, I remember each student and rate right when they got their first guitar lesson, let's say, and then, you know, a year or two or five or six later, how much they've developed as a musician and that they've really shown a lot of interest and dedication to music. Um, so having that, you know, that's how I've always been, like spending a lot of time on my instrument, um, being a teacher and a mentor to some of my kids is sort of like, it's a no-brainer. I just like doing it because then it improves everybody's life and the whole creative community in Central Ohio. Probably the best story that we have is um, 
During one of the summer music camps, we had the kids sit in U-shape and we had them introduce themselves. And as we went around the room, one of the girls that was there was so shy, she literally put her head on the table and started crying. And uh, I get <laughs> choked up telling a story. She's now the lead singer. And a mean guitarist. Yeah, and plays the guitar, and she's just totally had this major change. Now, not that every kid has that experience, but uh, that's what we do. We can help kids gain the confidence and the self-esteem that they need to uh, accomplish good things. Both of my kids are very artsy. They love to draw, they love to paint, Savannah draws calligraphy, she plays, she can write music. You know, she's very artistic, um, but for her, music is her way of expressing how she's feeling at that moment. Like, I, um, sometimes she, if she had a bad day at school and she's just sitting in the corner and she's playing, you know, you can tell by her demeanor, you know, that, you know, she's just playing because right now she doesn't want to talk. But then there's other times she'll just sit and play and play and play just because she feels like there's a song that she heard that she wants to learn how to play or, or something of that nature. And for her to be a young teenage black girl, with all the things that are going on in this world. For music to be her outlet, I can say as a mom, I, I'm glad that she chose music over the things, the influences, the everything that could go on in her life right now. Not really every day that you're performing in front of a whole bunch of people and like seeing a whole bunch of people clap for you, cheer for you, or go into the Lincoln Theater and stuff like that. It's the time after the performances where you're really like taking it all in. You're like, oh yeah, I just did that. And you're able to celebrate it with your other bandmates who also just did that. Music brings an availability to express yourself, you know, and use your creativity, which is not found necessarily in a classroom or on a sports team or even hanging out with your friends. When you get together with other musicians and other creative types, that really allows you to dive into that creative process where you feel like, ah, there's other people out there who understand this facet of my personality and really allow something that I never, that has never been invented before to come to life. The way he lived his life, relationships, he and Jesse Henry, the musician and wonderful director we have, is because of that friendship, that relationship. And um, yeah, I just, uh, it's wonderful to see those kinds of things that have just happened because of Kirk. Find out more at kirkhornmusicfund.com. We end today's episode with a performance from Luna, Jaden, Annie, Christina, Tristan, Jaya, Jalik, Anna, Caden, and Savannah, otherwise known as Los Diaz Titanes. Let's take a listen.
Well, that's our show. Remember, you can find all of our stories online at WOSU.org, as well as on our YouTube channel. For all of us here at WOSU, I'm Kate Quickle. Thanks for watching. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. She was looking kind of dumb with her finger in her thumb in the shape of an L on her forehead. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming. Fed to the rules and I hit the ground running. Did it make sense not to live for fun? Your brain gets smart but your head gets dumb. So much to do, so much to see. So what's wrong with taking the back streets? You'll never know if you don't go. You'll never shine if you don't glow. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on. Go play, hey now, you're a rock star, get the show on, go play, and all that glitters is gold, only shooting stars break the mold. It's a cool place, and they say it gets colder, you're bundled up now, wait till you get older, but the media men beg to differ, judging by the hole in the satellite picture. The ice we skate is getting pretty thin, the water's getting warm, so you might as well swim, my world's on fire. How about yours? That's the way I like it and I'll never get bored Hey now, you're an all-star Get your game on, go play Hey now, you're a rock star Get the show on, get paid And all that glitters is gold Only shooting stars Break the mold Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, celebrating expression, fostering talent, and connecting the community to Columbus artists, performances, exhibitions, concerts, public art, and more at columbusmakesart.com.